Emma and Ashley Walker hoped it would save their son from seemingly inevitable brain damage. Ross Walker had had a difficult birth. The heart rate should have been around about 140, 145 beats per minute, and he'd gone down to about 80 beats per minute. Then he went into convulsions. They told us that it was 94% chance um, that he could have severe brain damage. Lack of oxygen had damaged Ross's brain. A chain reaction had started with damaged cells releasing chemicals that attacked yet more cells. Soon, Ross's brain would destroy itself. So Ross was cooled to slow the destructive process down. He was in a, like a paddling pool without the bottom or the top. Mm. Um, and he was in the center and the cold air was blowing across him. So that was cooling him down by two degrees below the body temperature. I felt helpless because I couldn't do anything. I couldn't hold him. I couldn't do anything to help him. All Emma and Ashley could do was sit and wait and pray for a sign. We just sat by the bedside, didn't we? Just watching just and willing this machine to show us some, uh, some brain waves that were yeah. showing signs of activity. As the minutes, hours and days went by, we could see the, the brain waves picking up. We could see that there was a light coming on and um, we, had, uh, we had something to aim for, yeah. yeah. Over the next two years, brain scans followed Ross's development. Now, he is a normal, healthy toddler. He's a very happy boy. He's jumping around, he enjoys playing. He's good fun. He is right where he should be for a normal two-year-old. At the end of the day, I feel in our heart of hearts that we can say that without the treatment that uh, he would have been uh, um, severely brain damaged. Although the cold can save lives, Mike and Matt Coulyard were in danger of being frozen to death. For three days, the father and son had experienced freezing temperatures after they got lost 7,000 feet up a Turkish mountainside. Then, they heard the helicopters. I, I knew I was doing everything I could possibly do to try to make myself seen by the helicopters that came overhead. To describe the emotions that go with that is almost impossible. It's uh, a real bittersweet mixture of, hey, they're looking for us, and they didn't see us. <laughs> well, you hear that noise, and you're like, the adrenaline's pumping, and you're like, oh, we're saved, yay, and then it just flies over, and you just lose your hope all over again. As the days passed, Mike and Matt found it harder to keep going. They had eaten nothing but a handful of sweets and snow since they got lost. Suffering from hypothermia, and with their frostbite getting worse, their hopes were fading. At the seventh day point, I, I, th I thought we were gonna die, and I, there was a part of me that just st sort of just reconciled and resigned to that. about the eighth day into it and I'm just uh, thinking that we're our chances are, are less and less that we'll be found and then to leave my last thoughts with uh, the family my darling wife Mary how I grieve at leaving you behind but after eight days I think and the three helicopters that flew overhead and did not spot us it seems more and more the path the Lord is calling us on Matthew's been a real trooper. 
He wants me to relay to all of you how much he loves his family. Mary, my heart and soul forever, Mike.